Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Red Dragon Sports. I'm your host, Jeff Hazard, Assistant Director of Athletics and Sports Information Director here at SUNY Oneonta. And we've invited into our studio tonight the men's lacrosse program as we start now highlighting and talking about our spring athletics. Hard to imagine that the winter is finally over here and actually by the weather, you would have thought it was spring about two months ago. Uh, so please join me after the break and I'll be joined by tonight's first guest, head men's lacrosse coach, Dan Mahar. WUOW 104.7 FM is the region's premier radio station, offering award-winning programming from National Public Radio and Pacifica Radio Networks, giving you the chance to become more informed about the arts, information, and entertainment from around the country and around the world. WUOW is your community radio station. Join us and support the sound. Welcome back to the show. Joining me now in studio is head men's lacrosse coach Dan Mahar. Welcome back to the show, Dan. Thanks, Jeff. Good to be here. Early season. Again, I mentioned uh, spring has really sprung about two months ago. The weather, you guys were outside in January this year, right? I mean, it was incredible. Yeah, I mean, in a typical season, we're, we're indoors for almost the first month in February. And uh, I mean, we were indoors the first day and I think maybe one or two other days for the entire first month and a half or so. And um, I mean, what, what more can you ask for at right. this point of the year? Now, uh, for you, uh, and <coughs> actually pretty much any lacrosse program in the Northeast, I mean, that's got to help you with, with a lot of on-field preparation. So can you talk a little bit about how you, the good weather has really helped you prepare even more for this season? Yeah, and, and you know, I think, uh, you know, with, with some of the half-field stuff, similar to basketball, you know, I think we're always feeling pretty comfortable or as comfortable as you would feel early in the season, uh, you know, with your offense and your defense and things like that. But it's really the transition from offense to defense and the rides and the clears and that part of the game uh, that you really struggle with if you don't have time outside and do some full field uh, work. And I think we're much, much further ahead of the game at this point in the season than we were certainly in the, in the past few years because of the, the opportunities we've had to get outside and, and have some nice weather. So um, the the trade-off, of course, is that a lot of our opponents have had some of the same opportunities. Right. And so, um, but, but I think it actually, uh, overall, I think it's a good thing. Um, I think you're seeing, we're seeing cleaner lacrosse uh, than, than we've seen in the past for some of us, our upstate New York teams. And so right. it's, it's more exciting, I think, at this time of year than maybe it is in past years. Right. Some of the early games, I mean, because we've had a couple of home games already and we've seen uh, you know, it does seem to be a little cleaner. You know, teams right. are clearing better and there isn't as many turnovers and things right. like that. Uh, let's talk about a little uh, early season. Uh, we've, mm -hmm. We're into this regular season a few weeks. Uh, as always, we, we play a pretty good schedule. Uh, a lot of teams that we're playing this year are nationally ranked right now or mm -hmm. could be by the time we play them. Right. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit how it's going uh, here so far? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm pleased with where we're at at this point. Uh, as of yesterday, our schedule is ranked fifth in the nation for strength of schedule. So I think that certainly speaks to uh, the level which we're trying to challenge ourselves uh, and some of the opponents that we've already faced and, and we have uh, coming up here pretty soon. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're one and three at this point. Uh, we, we got a win yesterday uh, versus Hartwick, which we're obviously excited about. It's obviously a big win. Uh, given their proximity to us <laughs> um, and you know our other two games I think you know if you look at our our brief schedule at this point uh, how we've progressed in terms of how our defensive has played how our offensive played and, and how our uh, you know the in-between game I think that you you see a consistent steady improvement um, and I think we're we're a much better team today here uh, than we were, um, you know, certainly to start the season. So if we can continue kind of on that trajectory. I really like our, our chances here. Now the uh, uh, the Hartwick rivalry. I mean, is it? Is, I mean, tell us, talk a little bit about it. I mean, the in city. We 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 don't play them in every sport. Of course, they don't have every sport that we have. But the ones we do play them in. Uh, Talk a little bit about that. I mean, you played in it as a player right. here right. at SUNY Oneonta, and then, you know, now as a coach. I mean, right. is the rivalry changed? Uh, you know, it's it's. It's changed in some ways, but in, in, some, in some ways it never will change. And right. I think it's a, it's a great rivalry. Um, I mean, it has everything that you want. It's, uh, you know, you got certainly the proximity. 
you got blue versus red, you got uh, <laughs> private school versus state school, um, and, and at the same time, certainly with our sport, you got high school teammates playing on opposing teams. Yeah. Um, you know, I have some, a background having been an assistant coach at Hartwick for a couple seasons, and so uh, th there's a lot of elements there. You know, when I got here as a player, we really struggled against Hartwick, and, and they were uh, one of the top 10 teams in the country year in and year out. And, uh, you know, when I, when I first became an assistant coach here at Oneonta was when we first started to break in. And, and the Hartwick win that we had against them uh, in the early 2000s was really a marquee victory for our program in terms of a benchmark for where we've arrived, so to speak. And so, um, and, and it's been kind of back and forth ever since. And so it's, it's a game that certainly there's bragging rights. And, and as I kind of alluded to before, there's the high school teammates and, and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's, it's always intense. Uh, you know, you can kind of throw the records out the window, yeah. so to speak, and, um, and it's a battle. But, I mean, that's, that's what college sports are about. That's, that's one of the great things about college sports. And, and we're really fortunate to have that sort, of, uh, that sort of annual event every single year here. So. Right. Now, I mean, of course, rivalry means that, that there's an equal chance for both teams to win. It's not <laughs> one team. You know, there's no rivalry if one team wins all the time. And, right. and like you said, it's been pretty 50-50 every year. Yeah, you know, we've, uh, this, this is my fifth uh, season, and we've played them five years, and, uh, you know, we're three and two. I mean, it doesn't get any closer than that. Let's, right. let's hope it's four and two yeah. next year, but it could easily be three and three. And so it was two and two headed into this year. And so, yeah. um, you know, we, we're, we're battling back and forth, and every game seems to be nip and tuck. And so, um, like I said, uh, it's, it's an exciting environment and it's exciting. And we talk about it with the recruits. I mean, they, they're looking for a college experience and they're looking for that sort of experience. And some of them have a similar type of a thing in high school that they can relate to. And yeah. uh, it, it's an attractive element to our program. Now, uh, recruiting a little bit. I mean, certainly uh, this year uh, we had a, quite a few returning players, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much all of our attack uh, scorers, midfielders, yes. uh, cars. Uh, Chris Miles, goalie, who's been here for three, mm -hmm. you know, three, playing solid for us. Um, talk a little bit about uh, what it means to have players who have kind of now been with you for three years and kind of know how it's, how mm -hmm. it's done and, mm -hmm. and gone on. Uh, so talk about the importance of that and trying to build a program, trying to get it to that next. Well, I mean, anytime you, you, there's a coaching change or, or things like that, there's a tr transition that's, that's associated with that. And, and this is finally the first year where our roster is made up of entirely players that, that uh, our coaching staff recruited. And so, um, you know, I think that they make the decision, hopefully, to come to Oneonta to be part of a certain philosophy and a certain style and things like that. And, and I feel like we're able to, to play that style and, and, and have the buy-in in terms of the philosophical piece of that. Um, and not that we haven't had that in the past few years, but uh, there's, there's been some tug of war with that, but I feel like, I feel like we're at a really comfortable point now where, where we have the situation that we're kind of looking for. And so, um, you know, we're excited about our opportunities and, and we're recruiting, we're excited about our fall 2012 class, which we've essentially wrapped up. Uh, we have three very good seniors uh, this, on this year's roster uh, that are, are doing a phenomenal job. You're gonna talk with a few of them in, in a little bit here. Mm -hmm. um, but we're bringing back a, an awful lot of uh, key contributors this year and next year as well. And so hopefully, uh, you know, we can replace some of these, these big shoes that are leaving <laughs> us um, and, and continue to kind of climb the ladder, so to speak. Now, is that always the, um, when you're out recruiting, I mean, is it, are you recruiting for positions? Are you recruiting just to get, bring quality into the program? I mean, because like mm -hmm. you said, I mean, when you lose like a Hugh O'Gorman, who we're going to lose in a Devin right. Fogian, and next year, you know, it's a Jimmy Van Der Verdonk and some of right. these guys, I mean, right. do you say, oh, wow, we really need to get a face-off guy or we really right. need to get a defender? So, you know, I think that the best way to approach that is to try and be a little bit proactive. And so instead of, instead of saying, you know, Hugh O'Gorman and Devin Fui and Blair Hansen, right. they're graduating this year and we need to replace them next year. You know, the hope is that you're, you're, you're working on replacing them through recruiting before that they leave right. so that the guy right behind them is ready to step in and, and fill those shoes. And I think we have some of those types of situations. 
Uh, but certainly when you're talking about three seniors and two of them play defense and they're key contributors and captains for you, right. um, I can tell you without question defense was a, a point of emphasis for us with the recruiting process. And so, um, you know, I, I, I'm very happy with uh, the, the efforts that we made in, in that regard and in the, some of the guys that we have coming in. Now the uh, consistency and continuity then is, is key for, you know, like you said, you know, senior class leaves, junior class is stepping in, and then right. you got some sophomores that you're grooming and, and bringing Absolutely. in. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, um, and, you know, I mean, if we have, uh, you know, we're not graduating any midfielders this year, but we're certainly bringing in and looking for right. some talented midfielders. And if we can find those, um, you know, we're, we're certainly going to welcome those. So, right. um, you know, we want to, uh, and again, lacrosse similar to basketball again. I mean, if we have a, a point guard that can play, you know, forward as well, small forward, then, then we can move some guys around. So, you know, on paper we're losing one attackman and no midfielders, but we have some guys that, that are flexible, can play some different spots. So we're going to try and bring in the best players that we can and, and just find a spot for them uh, on the roster and, and in the lineup. So. Right. And, again, that goes back to kind of a quality type thing. If you have some guys Absolutely. that are versatile, it, it does help you down the road absolutely absolutely now being a graduate of Oneonta mm -hmm. uh, you know it's it's a hard recruiting trail out there yes does being a graduate of Oneonta do you think that gives you an advantage I think it does I mean when we talk to prospects and, and when we talk to their parents and, and we go through the whole recruiting process you know I think that I think most coaches are talking about their school they're talking about their academics they're talking about what it is like to be a student there and, and those kind of things and I think it brings hopefully another level of credibility when you can talk firsthand about, right. hey, you know, I, I lived in this dorm <laughs> and I, I ate at that dining hall and I took this class with this professor and so on and so forth. And, uh, and I hope that, that that brings, again, credibility with regards to your message. And, um, and I think that hopefully, again, it speaks to the fact that I'm, I've returned here and made the decision to return here and stay here. Uh, and hopefully that message is my experience was tremendous, and I believe in, in the product, so to speak, that we're selling here, um, and, and that it's a great place to be. Yeah, which is, I think is, is key, I mean, because we have quite a few coaches now in our staff that are graduates, which when they left here, you didn't, you know, maybe you didn't think they would be back right. here coaching, but right. again, they made a commitment to come back. They're, they believe in Oneonta, mm -hmm. they believe in the education, which certainly we know is one of the tops in the SUNY system. And, and I would even also add to that, you know, I think our administration has done a tremendous job of recognizing the fact that we're developing great leaders here, and, and, and then, you know, when we have the opportunity to welcome them back to campus to, to add to, to what we're doing here as an administration, um, and, you know, I think that speaks, speaks well. So, uh, Final question, what are your hopes, what are you looking for when the season is all said and done? Um, I like the track that we're on. So I, I'd like to, I mean, again, we have some, some big hurdles to face, uh, as I alluded to before. But I think that if we can continue on the path that we're on right now, where we're making steady, consistent progress, uh, we want to play, we want to be the best team we can be at the end of the season. And, uh, you know, I think, I think all options are on the table for us this year. I really feel like we can compete. The, the SUNYAC is, is going to be extremely competitive this year. Um, but I think, it's, I think one of the reasons it'll be competitive is because we're one of those teams that can compete. Right. And, and so I think we have great chance to, to really, you know, uh, maybe pull an upset here or there and, and find ourselves in the NCAA tournament and make a run. And so uh, I don't think it's too early to kind of start thinking about that and feeling that way. Well, we certainly uh, hope that happens, and we certainly will watch all season long and see how you progress and how we get there because certainly we have, uh, you know, even in just the first few games, you can see that we definitely are, uh, we, we're going to make some noise, I think, and, and, and as we go along. Absolutely. So. Well, good luck this year. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Well, I'd like to thank head men's lacrosse coach Dan Mahar for coming by tonight. And after the break, I'll be joined by senior captain Devin Fui. What makes D3 special is the ability to participate in my team and within the broader community. The perfect ending to a perfect season. Being a D3 student athlete has completely expanded my life. I learned how to lead. I really found a voice. What time is it? It's, game time. it's more about the experience rather than just a sport itself. Without the experience of being a Division III student athlete, I wouldn't be the person who I am today. NCAA Division III. Discover. Develop. Dedicate.
Welcome back to the show. Joining me now is men's lacrosse senior captain, Devin Fui. Welcome to the show, Devin. Hi, thanks for having me. Why don't you uh, tell, tell us where you're from? Uh, I'm from West Ice of New York on Long Island. And uh, uh, you're majoring in? Um, communication studies. Communication studies. Now, uh, West Islip, we get quite a few uh, men's and women's lacrosse players from West Islip. Uh, you guys are like at a high school powerhouse, aren't you? We are. We are. <laughs> We're very good. Now, uh, did that help you uh, in your transition from high school to college? I mean, you know, playing lacrosse here, I mean, mm -hmm. how do you think that helped you playing at such a high high level in high school? I really think it did. Uh, you were playing at the top level, we were going to states or winning counties every year, so it really, we were really playing great teams and great players. So it does, it does shape you to be prepared for the, the college level, but it's still coming here was a big transition from high school across. Right. Now, um, uh, uh, earlier on the show, Dan mentioned about a lot of times you'll go out and, and you know, the opponents we play uh, have uh, teammates that you might have played with. Uh, what's that like as a student athlete to go against someone that you played with, you know, three or four years ago? It, it's really interesting. It's a, it's a completely different person, and they're playing on a completely different team, but you still look at them as, a, as your friend, and it's just exciting. I think it adds to it. You want to beat them. You want to show them what you've been working at and how hard you've worked all season. And Now being a senior playing against someone you played with in high school is it's it's the final turning point. It's showing them what you've accomplished. Right now, um, uh, of course, you, there is that inner rivalry that you know, like you said, you want to beat them. But at the end, you shake hands. Yeah, at the end, it's, we're all friends. And I mean, I played against Hartwick. My friends on that team. Yeah. You know, I played with them in high school. And at, I mean, even during the game, if he did something good, like I, I kind of wanted to cheer for him for a minute. But yeah. you know, at the end, we took a picture together. I talked to his parents, and it was nice. It just it's really nice playing against high school. Uh, teammates. Now it seems like that's um, lacrosse, you know, more so at the time I've been here. It's kind of a, you know, the tailgating and the families mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the camaraderie. And I mean, what is that, like, what does that mean to you to be able to be part of a kind of like a lacrosse family? Yeah, it, it really, it really is like a, a home away from home. And, and it's nice because especially away at school, you kind of, you miss, you miss the, the feeling of being home and the comfort of being home. Right. And having a family outside your family and even outside of the lacrosse team family and you can count on other people's parents, it's, it's nice and it, and it does bring a lot more uh, character to the program. Right. Now, and of course, we have a, quite a following. Uh, they're all there at the home games mm -hmm. and they're all lined up on the other side. Of course, the weather's been good. Yes. Uh, so we can't complain about that, which has helped a little bit. Um, your decision to come here four years ago, I mean, what was it that turned it for you that, that made you decide to come on Oneana? Uh I really enjoy being upstate. Um, I had a couple friends on the team. The, the program was looking well. It was really developing. Uh, it, w it really was just looking promising, and I felt like Oneana might be the place for me, and, and it turned out it was. Now, four years later, you're one of our uh, captains. Uh, what's it mean to you to be a, a captain of, of the lacrosse team here? Right now, I, I don't even think I've grasped the whole concept of being a, a captain. I'm, I'm trying to work on it, and it, it's every day. It's a different experience. It's, it's really about learning how to adapt in situations and encourage other people through your own actions. So it's difficult, and uh, I'm working on it, but I really do enjoy it, and it's an honor. So now, do you think that um, learning those leadership skills uh, certainly, hopefully, will translate to your chosen profession or what you want to do after you graduate? I really do. I think it's going to give me an upper hand. I think it's going to allow me to handle situations a lot, uh, maybe a little bit more professional than I would have and if I didn't have this experience. So I really, I really hope it does and I think it will. Now can you point to uh, any one maybe game situation uh, during your four years here that um, it made you proud to be uh, at Oneonta? I think a, a lot of games made me proud to be at Oneonta. Uh, definitely beating Hartwick last, uh, last year was huge. Um, I mean, we, we were, we, I thought it was over. We were down by two, and yeah. there was like four minutes left, and we came back. And just winning that game, because it's such a huge rivalry, uh, that, that really made me proud to be here at Oneonta. Now, when you, uh, when you graduate from Oneonta, uh, now you're involved uh, in the recruiting process. I mean, kids come on campus all the time. Do you get to be involved with... Uh, talking with some of the prospective uh, athletes that come? Yeah, we get to meet some of the kids. I mean, I wouldn't say that we're completely involved in it because it, we're right. leaving, we're, we're moving yeah. on, but right. we do meet a lot of the kids. I've talked to a couple of them, uh, a couple of West of kids that were looking to come here. I met with them. I talked to them over the summer. So I knew a, a bunch of them, so I do help a little bit. Now, what does that mean to you to be able to now 
kind of um, you know talk to them about Oneonta and tell them how great of a school it is. And it's neat. It really is interesting because when you were when I was coming here as a freshman, they're telling you you know you're talking to the seniors, asking what it's like, how are classes, and they're telling you all this stuff, and you have no idea what they're talking about. And now you're telling them, thinking they understand. They're probably like, I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah. So it, it's 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 nice, but you you want to tell them all the best things you can, and it's right. hard to get it all in, in one minute. Right. <laughs> what um, what are your hopes for this year? What are your hopes for your last season here? I want to win the Suniac. I mean, that's that's our goal all year. That's the reason we have such a, a hard schedule. We want to prepare for the Suniac games. And last year we lost. I think it was three games by one goal in the SUNYAC, so yeah. that was very upsetting. And this year we're looking to come back and make a statement. Yeah. Now, uh, and do you think now you have? Uh, when we talk a little bit about your your leadership style, uh, do you find yourself being a vocal leader or someone that just kind of uh, like an example, lead by example? I find myself being more of a vocal leader. Uh, I don't think I'd like to do that, but I have to because you know sometimes you just can't do it on the field and. You have to encourage people in a different way. Right. But I think with the captains we have, I kind of fell into that role. Right. So, you know, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to try to do my best with it. Well, we certainly uh, hope uh, you stay healthy and we wish the best of the team this year. And certainly we hope you have a great senior year and we hope you guys do win the SUNY accident thank and you. go to the NCAA. So thanks thank for you. coming by. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, I'd like to thank Devin Fui for coming by this evening. And after the break, I'll be joined by another senior captain, Hugh O'Gorman. Hey, how's it going? Sir, are you okay? What? Oh, this? It's probably nothing. I'm sure it'll go away. Go away? But, sir, that can't be good. No, it's cool. Really. Do you want a napkin or something? Everything's fine. Thanks. You wouldn't ignore this. So why ignore the signs of a stroke? At the first warning signs, call 911 immediately. Because time lost is brain lost. Welcome back to the show. Joining me now is a senior captain from the men's lacrosse team, Hugh O'Gorman. Welcome to the show, Hugh. How you doing? Why don't you tell us where you're from? I'm from uh, Putnam Valley, New York. Putnam Valley. You've had quite a few players from Putnam Valley over the last few years. Yes, uh, we have. Is it, uh, what, what, why? Why are we getting players from Putnam Valley? Well, I decided to come here because um, I knew someone who came here and I was looking around and uh, I, I'd like, I switched from midfielder to uh, defenseman going into my senior year, so like I really wasn't getting a lot of looks to go uh, to college to play uh, defense and, yeah. and stuff like that. So like I was looking around and Oneonta came up and I knew my friend came here. So I came here f to, like, to hang out with the guys and everything and I really enjoyed it. And uh, great campus, great everything. So Right, now um, a lot of the student athletes that we have on the show talk about that campus visit and then they just it kind of wows them a little bit and they're like wow this is really a place I'd like yeah. to come I mean did that happen for you as well yeah exactly I, I came here I love the surroundings I love the town I loved um, I heard about the school and there was a good reputation and everything like that and I met all the guys on the team and everyone seemed really tight nice and close good friends right. and that kind of pushed me in the direction to come here now certainly uh, you're majoring in uh, biology biology uh, what are you hoping to do with that I'm hoping to, uh, to get into PT school Ah. This coming uh, summer, wow! But uh, um, it's really competitive field, and yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get starting to hear back right now from schools. So. Right, physical therapy. Uh, yeah. We've had some students. We've had actually quite a few student athletes that have gone on to PT school from from Oneonta. I mean, I don't I don't know if people really know that. Like, if you know, people think, oh, you know, you got to go to a phys ed school or, or you know, major in, or minor in something like that. But I mean, you know, you you can. Go on to fashion, you know, the Fashion Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do all kinds of stuff. I mean, t tell us how exciting that is to be able to have that opportunity for, for doing something like that. Um, PT school? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I, like, I would like, at first I was like, I came here and I was like, I want to be, let's see, like, you know, an education major. Yeah. Like a, a lot of people do want to, it's a good school for it. Yeah. But, um, and then I heard one of my friends, they were like, oh, no, I'm a biology major and then I want to be a physical therapist. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, well, that sounds really cool. It has to do with like athletics yeah. and like the human body. It's really interesting and everything like that. Right. So uh, in freshman year, I just switched and I switched to it. And every, ever since that, I just kept on the same track. Now, you think it. that uh, being an athlete uh, will help you, uh, you know, in that chosen profession? Because you'll yeah. understand, because of course you guys yeah. work out 
like crazy and you get in mm -hmm. shape for this sport of lacrosse. So I, I know you guys do that. Um, but do you think that that would give you an edge being an athlete? I think so because you're, you're around like injuries all the time and yeah. that's what physical therapists do. They just treat injuries and they try to help people. And that's one thing I want to do when I grow up is like make an impact in other people's lives. So, and yeah, because there's so many injuries we go through, even myself yeah. included. And you're in the training room and you just <laughs> right. rehab, rehab all the time. Right. Yeah. Now, making an impact on other people's lives, that's certainly a noble uh, to, to be able to want to do that. Uh, you're kind of making, you've been making a, an impact just in our men's lacrosse program. I mean, you're a senior captain. You know, we talked to Devin a little bit about it. Uh, what's it mean to you to be a captain of our men's lacrosse program? I, f I feel um, honored as well, um, only because like all the guys on the team are really good guys. And like I feel like they, they show really good respect to us and they want to do everything, anything they can to help us out and make the team better. Right. So I really enjoy it because our teammates are really, really. Now being a defender, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, you don't get a lot of stats as far as, you know, the guys who score all the goals and stuff like that. Of course, you're a pretty mobile defender, though. I mean, I watch you run up and down when we clear the ball and stuff like that. Um, I mean, is that, you know, to be able to see the whole game, see the field? Uh, you know, I asked Devin, is he a vocal guy? or I mean, what kind of a leader are you? I'm, like, kind of the opposite of Devin. Um, I, I, like, I'm vocal at some times when we need to be, but um, I love to just, you know, watch back and watch everyone and try to sh like um, push people in the right. way but just like pushing myself kind of thing right and I hope that reciprocates to everyone else on the team right. and they uh, push themselves right lead by so. example and try and hope that it rubs off on some of the other younger players now the younger players in the program I mean do they come up to you guys and ask you questions about not just lacrosse but I mean do they pick your brain about classes and academics and yeah of course on um, campus there's a couple of younger guys on the team that um, ha that have the same major as me yeah. and uh, a couple of them came up to me and they're like how are you doing like how do you do in this class what, what were some good things I need to do and stuff and I try to give the best answers to them encourage them to right. do well and stay in the same major. Uh, four years ago did you ever think that you'd be in this position or be a resource for for kids and in, in, you know what I mean like it's a, I mean it really is kind of neat yeah. isn't it? Not really you know like it's it's weird like I hardly feel like a senior um, I still feel like one of the younger guys, but it's crazy be that I'm a senior now because when I came in, looking at the seniors, I was like, whoa, like they're so old and, you know, like. <laughs> no, it's true. You do. Yeah. You, and you think the four years just goes by. And, and like you said, I mean, here you are. You're going to be graduating in another couple months and, and your lacrosse, you know, your lacrosse part of your collegiate career will be over. I mean, there might be opportunities for you to do some coaching or, or do some other stuff. I mean, do you have any aspirations to be a coach, a lacrosse I coach? definitely do, yeah. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, I would definitely want to be a coach, like, because I, I don't know if I can't be around any sports, and like, I want to keep being involved, you know. And that's like s the same thing, like, if you're being a coach, you're helping people out, you know. Right. You're giving yourself, right. you're, like, you know, you're trying to help people out, right? Being impactful, better. right? Um, so now, what are your, how do you look at this season, and, and what are your hopes for for the 2012 men's lacrosse team? I look at this season coming into it. Everyone was really excited, including myself. And I think we, we, we have a good start. We started off, we played some good teams in the beginning. We just came off a really good win yesterday. And I think we're, we're going to get rolling now. I think we, we got what we want. And uh, we just got to keep pushing and keep going. Right. Sometimes getting that first one is, you know, once you get that first one, because you can see it on the field that, that everybody is working together, working hard. I mean, everybody is, is doing you know what coach wants them to do I mean it just is just seems to be a di different I guess atmosphere this year around the team it seems like you know you guys with your leadership and we do have some junior captains as well um, I mean meshing those guys together I mean is that uh, to be captains with them I mean how exciting is that to have juniors uh, be leaders on our team it's, it's really exciting because you, you can get like <clears throat> if like you have younger captains as well like they they help you out tremendously with um, giving you like helping you out giving you input and everything right. like that like you know that sometimes if you have a senior captain they wouldn't say anything you know right. it's like different different perspective right right because uh, I mean they they're important they feel like they want to be part of the team so certainly uh, I mean you guys are doing a great job uh, we look forward to uh, the whole season and uh, we wish you good luck and health and Thank no you. injuries uh, yeah. as you guys progress and and hopefully in May uh, we'll be playing in the NSA tournament
Hope so. Well, thanks for coming by. Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank all the members of the uh, Men's Lacrosse Program for coming by this evening. And you can follow them all season long at www.oneontaathletics.com. And certainly sign up to follow us on Twitter and become a fan on our Facebook page. Uh, thank you all for joining me this week, and we'll see you next time on Inside Red Dragon Sports. <laughs>